Hi, it's teardown time. I was contacted by Bank, BenQ, whatever you want to call them, um, a while back and they said, hey, we've got these new fangled Bluetooth grown electrostatic speakers. Do you, do you want to review them? And it's like, nah, not really. You know, if you, if you want, send it into the mailbag and I might do a quick two minute teardown. But with the recent electrostatic whiteboard uh, video, which I've done, a, I'll link in down below and at the end if you haven't seen it, I thought this might make an interesting follow up to look at how an electrostatic loudspeaker is built. Because these are like electrostatic loudspeakers. A lot of the audio files rave about electrostatic uh, loudspeakers and how they uh, are totally different to voice coil loudspeakers. So I thought it could be interesting to take a look at these things. They're not very common these days, but obviously they're jumping on the wanky bandwagon and they've got these new Bluetooth consumer thing. Anyway, let's check it out, shall we? Hey, I'm not, I don't care, this will not be a review of the speakers, because, like, I just don't care about, like, a Bluetooth speakery thing. Anyway, um, even though I did have a recent mailbag video, which I haven't shot yet, these are Audio Smile Bluetooth speakers. There, These are a Kickstarter, do it yourself. I might do a quick teardown on those ones. Anyway, that'll be a separate video. Um, so, let's have a look at this. Trevolo S-Series. Okay, supposed to be newfangled, but they use the old electrostatic principle, which is interesting because I thought, like, the only electrostatic speakers I've sort of uh, known of. That's it? I've got one. Oh, it's one speaker. I assumed it was multiple speakers. It's. Unless. Yeah, it's one speaker. Go figure. Anyway, some of. None that's stereo rubbish. And that's. Wow, that's surprising. That's that's surprisingly hefty. I do. Wow, I do like the oh gold. Oh, oh, thank you very much. The gold. Look at that wankery. Excellent. That actually feels like really nice quality. It looks like they've got two regular voice coil drivers in the front, but that's oh oh oh. It's wings. It's got. There's your stereo. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and these electrostatic. Panels, that's actually really, that's actually really quite funky. So I, I assume maybe they've got the uh, the voice coil uh, drivers, your traditional ones for a bit of bass, like a lower end. I'm not sure of the frequency response. I don't know the details. Anyway, a couple of adaptery things. Who cares? I'm interested. I'm sure it sounds okay. But uh, I'm, I'm interested in looking at the construction of the electrostatic. Speakers, I think this may be a destructive teardown. <laughs> Beautiful. So I've got to admit, I really am impressed by the build quality of this thing. It really feels like a solid bit of kit. We've got a metal case here. We've got the uh, uh, passive dissipators on the side. It's not your traditional uh, ported base enclosure because these are the base drivers on the front here. And uh, I don't know, it doesn't actually specify like what the crossover frequency is, what the uh, range of the electrostatic uh, parts are. So yeah, we don't really get that sort of detail. Anyway, it does feel like a real high quality bit of kit. I am very impressed. It's got uh, NFC in it to help with uh, Bluetooth pairing and all that sort of stuff. It's got various wanky uh, modes and things like that. And you just hold it down and it powers on. As I said, it is actually uh, bloop, it is actually battery uh, powered, micro USB, probably should have been USB-C these days, I guess, uh, 3.5 millimeter TRS uh, audio input jack, if you want to use it that way. And Fabric in Chini. Do the, does it actually come out the back as well? Because they've got the same grill on the back, so I'm not sure. Anyway, let's get into it. Looks like we've got some screws under there. And we've got torque screws. None of this Phillips rubbish. Phillips? <laughs> get it because Philips make audio gear <coughs> I'm here all week and they've got like a vibration absorption uh, foot on this thing so you know that's a nice tension to detail they've tried there no you know it's not going to be hugely effective um, given the you know the thickness of that but anyway nice touch aha that was tricky kind of had to prize it open and it, it anyway it finally came off Ta-da! we're in like Flynn 
check it out. There's our passive radiator. Look at that. We've got one on either side because this is not your traditional uh, tuned port enclosure because these are our woofers down here. We've got dual ones, so probably because you can't put a large diameter in here, of course, because how slim it is. Therefore, you can't move as much uh, volume with one cone. So that's probably why they put two in there to move extra volume. And so instead of having a ported enclosure, they have these. And uh, this is um, like Focal do a similar thing, not with my ones, but with uh, some of their high-end uh, studio monitors and things like that. Instead of having a tuned port enclosure, I won't pretend to uh, know all the uh, pros and cons of that. You can fight that out in the comments yourself. But anyway, that is a real nice bit of engineering. I'm very, uh, very impressed by the uh, envelope and form factor and build quality of this thing. It's excellent. We've got one main board here. Looks like we've got another uh, board on the front for all the front panel switches and a couple of LEDs. Uh, probably for no, near field antenna is actually, it's right there where the symbol is, which is how it's uh, supposed to be. But everything's all on this uh, one board. And we've got our two batteries down the bottom. They look like two uh, 18650s. Got some battery and charge management happening on the uh, backboard. And with the uh, USB interface of it, yeah, they've got a board-to-board -board interconnect down in there. They've even gone to the effort to put these little foam pads in here. So when you close that, it, it goes like it closes with a nice, soft, sort of, you know, dull thud instead of a whack. And that's an analog device's SSM3582. And that's a uh, Class D amplifier. Um, 35 watt job and well yeah that's all there is to the uh, drive in this thing uh, perfectly adequate nice part for the job so no worries there whatsoever as for the rest of the board here not much else doing just got a whole bunch of passives of course there's going to be uh, some more uh, processing under here because it's got a uh, you know a DSP type magical algorithm thing in there of course where's Wally this is an electrostatic speaker, so it's got to have some sort of high voltage drive. And bingo, lift the skirt there, and we found ourselves, there's our high voltage transformer. There's uh, two of them here. Now, I'll put up a uh, typical uh, diagram of how an electrostatic speaker actually works. And, you know, really, that's how they're doing it with the uh, center tap of the uh, transformer there. So, the cent yeah, center tap's going off the ground. And this is going on. This is coming from here. So this is going off to the speaker. It looks like speakers either side there, is it? And we'll have to flip the board over to see on the other side. Anyway, there's two of those uh, transformers in there. Uh, one for each um, electrostatic speaker. And I really like. You take the screws off, and then you pull it out. That board-to-board -board interconnect there, and they've got tape everywhere on these things, holding down all the cables too. That's a very nice attention to detail. This thing just oozes build quality, it really does. There's our extra processor. And that's where all the magic happens. It's a CSR 8670 from Qualcomm. And this is like a Bluetooth spe application specific uh, processing DSP chip. It has a DSP core in it, a whole bunch of other stuff. Incredibly powerful purpose design ASIC chips. So yeah, no wonder they're using that. Does all the magic, runs at like 80 megahertz uh, DSP. You can see the little oscillator over there. You can see a whole bunch of miscellaneous stuff around there. I don't actually have access to a data sheet for that. It's probably one of those stupid, uh, you know, proprietary things. You've got to sign an NDA to get it, something like that. I love the uh, SMT arrow on here, as if this is going through a wave soldering machine. This is not. This would be double-sided uh, reflow. So I'm not sure why they have the directional uh, arrow on there. So <laughs> it's, it's strange. And if you thought that uh, Qualcomm DSP did everything, uh-uh. Look at this special purpose chip from a company called uh, Quick Filter, and it's the th uh, QF 3D uh, FX uh, psychoacoustic processor. You, you have a hard time finding a more sort of like a specific 
chip than this one that it does, as its name suggests, it, it does all sorts of acoustic effects for like, you know, passive radiators and, you know, quasi surround sound and all that sort of stuff for using like TV sound bars and, you know, all those sort of things. So perfect uh, for something like this. So not only do we have, you know, that doing its business, but of course, the you know, the special purpose uh, DSP over here. So this has lots of like, you know, digital processing magic in it. Oh, here's our transformers. Let's take a look at those. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see that. I don't know where my macro lens is and my microscopes aren't set up yet, sorry. But that's an AKM 722. AKM semiconductor make lots of uh, special purpose, like, you know, audio chips and DACs and all that sort of stuff. And we've got two of those jobs there. And they're going out there driving the transformers there, as you can see. So I can't actually find any data on that. The 722, I can't find a match at AKM semiconductor so i yeah i'm not sure whether or not that's some special code so it's, it's a power amplifier driver thing that's a tiny little piss ant chip look <laughs> what a pain in the ass package <laughs> unbelievable and you'll notice the uh fully sealed enclosure here they've got these little they like little rubber hard rubber plugs in there to actually seal this up because this is as i said it's not a tuned port enclosure it's a completely sealed enclosure enclosure with these passive radiators there so i don't really care about the other boards in here like the charging board and stuff like that i you know <laughs> really all of the magics are happening on here so from the circuitry point of view that's really all we care about and of course you know class d amplification incredibly efficient which is why you know we don't even need any like backside uh, PCB heatsink or anything like that, you know, thermal V is going down or anything like that. So incredibly efficient. This is like, you know, a 30 odd watt speaker, but it, it doesn't waste much at all. And inside there, there's nothing uh, exciting happening. There's no acoustic uh, material or something like that. They've got like what looks like a fairly uh, long throw woofer down in there well as long throw as you can get for you know like what an inch and a half uh diameter something like that so and that's just the passive radiator like that i mean you'll probably never see it go thump 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 like that but it does have a fair fair amount of travel look at that anyway they're designed to like just passively radiate that out and i won't pretend to know the advantages of that over a tune port uh, enclosure all the uh speaker designers out there can Fight it out in the comments. Let's actually have a quick listen and compare them to my my focal professional studio monitors here, CMS40 diecast alloy enclosure. These things are sex on a stick, let me tell you. I'll ironically play my own intro video. Trevolo speaker. Yep. Let's go. And then I'll switch it. Hi, it's teardown time. I was contacted by Bank. BenQ, whatever you want to call them. And now the Focal CMS40. Get down time. I was contacted by Bank, BenQ, whatever you want to call them, um, a while back and they said, hey, we've got these new fangled Bluetooth grown. Back to the Trevolo. It static. totally man. lacks the base of the uh, Focals, but that's uh, to be expected, of course, given the minimal uh, drivers that we've got in there but yeah it sounds a bit hollow but it's actually pretty good it articulates speech fairly well speakers now this is interesting they, uh, listen to totally this different to right with oil. the speakers out now like speakers, this so i thought it could be interesting to take a look at these things they're not very common these days but obviously they're jumping on the wanky bandwagon and they've got these new bluetooth consumer and i fold the thing. tweeters anyway, in you know out, the the electrostatic and panels not, i don't care it, this will not be a review of the speakers and it's you know like, it doesn't lose a about, huge like, amount like of the high-end detail thing. at all anyway Okay, what I've done is actually uh, disconnect the electrostatic uh, tweeters on the side here. I call them tweeters. I'm not sure how full range they are. So let's actually play it. Electrostatic speakers, do you, do you want to review them? And it's like, nah, not really. You know, if you, if you want, send it into the mailbag. So and it's a bit a muted. As you can, uh, like the high frequency the stuff is a bit muted. But let's play the Weird Owl. But it 
it does seem that these uh, drivers on the front here uh, actually have like kind of your traditional crossover frequency of your studio monitors because I've uh, disconnected the tweeters from my studio monitors and you get that sort of like it sounds like a couple of kilohertz uh, sort of uh, bandwidth so the electrostatics are definitely doing the high end now I tried to power it up without these uh, drivers the main drivers but it just wouldn't power up so I don't know it might have some sort of you know uh, broken coil detection or something like that it just it just wouldn't boot strange but there you go I disconnected the woofers after I booted up and that's a response geez there's not much coming out of those electrostatics haven't adjusted the volume at all which I've done It, it, in that aspect, yeah, the electrostatics um, seem to be doing uh, your traditional uh, tweeter function like you get in regular two-way speakers. Now, the interesting thing about what we just heard is I'm not sure how it's possible because I had the case off. And look at the, uh, of course, you need three wires going to the electrostatic uh, speaker. And you can see the three wires going in there. Two of them, of course, come from uh, up here, which comes from the main board. That's from the output of the uh, audio uh, transformer here, which isolates the uh, high voltage. The third one is just going over to this, which goes over to the case. And sure enough, if you have a look at the case, they've removed the uh, powder coating on there. So those two wires are supposed to go to your two outer grids in your electrostatic speaker. And the third wire is supposed is the high voltage one which goes to the diaphragm, which is supposed to be sandwiched in the, in the middle. That's assuming that this is, you know, your traditional um, construction electrostatic speaker. So we've got no electrical connection to that. So how's it working? Um, Bueller, Bueller. In fact, I don't see any high voltage generation at all. Because, look, if you, once again, if you compare it with your traditional, like, uh, standard electrostatic uh, implementation, okay, we've got our high voltage isolation transformer. The center tap of our output is uh, negative, which is connected down to our circuit ground here. No problems whatsoever. But then we're supposed to have a high voltage generation on the other end of that, which is down here. So this is supposed to generate, uh, this is supposed to be connected to the positive of our HV uh, source. But you can see it's physically electrically connected to the case. Um, so what the? I mean, there's just nothing on there. There's no Cockroft Walton multiplier, like high voltage multiplier, as I've done a separate video on. So the only way that this can work is if they flip it around and instead of having a high voltage generator, they actually use the transformer itself as a high voltage uh, step up. So I suspect that we're going to see a large turn ratio from the primary to the secondary. So we're going to have ohms over here and we might have hundreds of ohms or even kilo ohms on the secondary side of it. And then that center tap of the transformer on the secondary side, that's connected to ground, of course. So then you don't need any high voltage generator. You're actually using the transformer to boost the amplitude of the signal going to uh, the two outer, so the differential going to the two outer grids is your high voltage, and then go into your uh, diaphragm in the middle. So let's have a look. So this is the primary side. And yep, 1.1 ohms, no wackers, geez, that's low. So, you know, they, it's a grunty little, uh, that grunty little uh, driver that they're uh, using there, that little ball grid array, tiny thing. And the secondary, I expect at least, ah, one point, there you go, one and a half K. So yeah, they're stepping up that like a thousand times. So out of one volt drive level, uh, just as an example, you'll get a thousand volts differential drive across your electrostatic, well, across your two uh, grids as a differential. And then they're just using the diaphragm is connected to ground. So they've just uh, inverted the topology, uh, so to speak, of your regular electrostatic implementation. It, it works for them. For those who want to see the other side of the charger board, there it is. The uh, case ground is connected to the USB ground here. So, and we're getting further into it now. And you can see there's a little NFC antenna up there. You can see that there's nothing on there. That's just got the uh, switches. 
and a couple of LEDs, and that's all she wrote. That's all very nicely integrated and designed. I really like it. Very impressed by the uh, design and construction of this thing. Hats off to the team that did that. And for all you driver aficionados, there you go. There's a fair bit of throw in that, isn't there? Don't mind that. Everyone's horrified now that I'm poking it. Now if you're wondering where that uh, coax coming from the DSP chipset there was going off to, well, I know you were. There it is there. So that's your Bluetooth on the top. Beauty. All right, I was thinking that we might have to unscrew all that, but it looks like not. It's just clipped in the back there. I've got some felt. Let's lift that off. Aha, bloody tape. There we go. Oh, look, got a cross pattern thing happening here. Look at that. You can see the mesh. Wow, it's fascinating. And we've got some sort of cross pattern happening inside here. See if you can hear that. That's definitely very fine metal mesh. And we're almost certainly going to have the same thing happening on the other side here. Undoubtedly, yep, an identical screen on the back there. Aha, uh -huh. there's our connection. So it doesn't, looks like it only, maybe it only goes to here. Doesn't go all the way with LBJ right over to here. Okay, just took the little four little screws out there. So in the traditional topology, you expect one of the terminals to go off to the bottom plate, one to go off to the top plate, and the third connection going through to the screen in the middle. Ah, there we go. So it's all sandwiched together. So it looks like I'm going to have to either peel off that tape or cut right through it to get into there. But yeah, you can certainly see the uh, the cross patterns on there. That's interesting. Don't know why they needed to do that. Sure enough, that's exactly what we see. One connection to the top grid, one connection to the bottom grid down there with the middle wire. Where's Wally? Where's the middle wire? I'm gonna have to track it down. Whoa, there's our, there's the other end of our connection, right? There's our third, there's our third wire. It just goes to there. It doesn't go to the inner diaphragm. It's not your traditional electrostatic speaker. What the, it's going off to here. What the heck's going on? All it does is connect to this metal plate here, which that's it. That sits on the back of the rear, well, let's call this the rear grid here. And th that's it. That's all it connects into. What the heck's going on? How does that work? And sure enough, you know, you measure it again, there's actually no electrical connection between the top and bottom grid there. They're, they're open, as you'd expect. They're just two grids. Uh, a physical metal grid mesh thing separated by some sort of dielectric that's not connected to anything as far as I can see. Well, that uh, certainly explains why this thing was fully operational when I disconnected the case and disconnected this, uh, which was supposed to be your traditional uh, diaphragm in the middle. So there is no diaphragm in the middle. It's simply a top and bottom grid separated by some sort of dielectric -y thing. And they drive that at, you know, a thousand volts or two uh, differential and it acts as, a, as an electrostatic speaker. So, okay. <laughs> That's how they want to play it. There, it's you know, it obviously does the business because it sounds okay. And this uh, metal plate at the back is just for you know uh, grounding purposes, really. It just connects to the chassis ground, and that's it. So it's just purely a differential drive, uh, grid plate systemy thingamabob. As for what's happening with the physical construction, there, it's just taped together. You can see that there's that. In a, like there's like a, like a, almost like a tape, an adhesive tape holding that off. That cross pattern is actually uh, something that's stuck on to the, it's like a separator. I'd say it's like just that they're just using that as a physical sort of like separator. And then there's this, this fabric 
kind of stuff in there. What sort of actual material that is? I'm not uh, not entirely sure, but you can see that's very much like a like a fabric, very thin fabric. Wow, fascinating. And it's exactly the same on the other side. So there you go, high voltage across those grids, little sort of uh, separator, some sort of fabric. And Bob's your uncle, you've got yourself a fairly effective electrostatic speaker. Hmm. So I'm putting this back together, and I mentioned before that I was impressed by the physical design and construction of this thing. And yeah, I can see all the... Uh, method to how they're doing this when you actually uh, assemble it uh, from the, you know, from the scratch uh, position. I didn't entirely take the whole thing apart, like hinges and, and stuff like that. I took a part of the top thing off and the front cover and all that, but it all really goes together very nicely. This is where uh, systems engineering, systems design can, you know, really make or break your product because to make it this small and compact and get uh, the performance out of this thing and yet have it you know low cost manufacturable and and all that sort of jazz then you know it's a big part of product design okay so i've got some weird owl happening here i've got my high voltage uh, probe connected across one of the the output of one of the uh, electrostatic speakers there i'm only on uh 10 to 1 and we're at uh, 20 volts per division so we can see like 40 volts there you know peaking at maybe 60 something like that but i i'm not going huge volume at the moment so yeah it's like it's not a thousand volts but the problem here is that uh, I don't know how much the probe's actually loading it down. So, and if I really turn it up, here we go. There we go. That's 20 volts per division. So, yeah, well over 100 volt peaks there. And if I actually go between the uh, center tap there and one side of that, you can see that we're much lower in aperture. We're down to 10 volts per division now. So... It's the differential that's, uh, that's doing all the damage there. So there you have it. That's the BenQ Trevolo S. It's been around, uh, well, I'm not sure how long this new model's been around, but the original model, this is like a second generation one, I believe. Um, so yeah, they've made some improvements and they claim all sorts of, you know, you read the brochure and it's wank, 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 wank. Um, but it actually seems to do the business as far as like <laughs> it's, it's fit for purpose is uh, fantastic. So if you're after a Bluetooth um, speaker that does the business, um, this one <laughs> seems pretty good. So I'll leave a link down below. Thank you for Bing Q for sending that in. Wasn't as fascinating as I was hoping it would be in terms of the electrostatics, but they are incredibly simple. They are essentially that, um, except it doesn't have your traditional uh, diaphragm in the uh, sandwiched in the middle of it. It's just using basically two metal meshes separated by some sort of fabric-y type material. If you've got any details on what that might be, or uh, I, they don't seem to have a, a uh, patent on this, but uh, if if I find one or you can uh, point one out, let us know. But uh, yeah, it's a, they're electrostatic speakers, and uh, the directionality of the speakers seems to be, you know, a, a much more forgiving than your uh, more traditional, uh, you know, monitors or... Uh, uh, hi-fi speakers well, where it really matters you know where you have the tweeters uh, actually direction you've got to have them pointed right at you this one seems a lot more forgiving so yeah it's actually <laughs> it's quite impressive and as I said the engineering in this is uh, very nice but yeah they've uh, I don't know if this is some newfangled electrostatic thing or whether or not uh, all your electrostatic fanboys let us know this is the first time I've torn down an electrostatic uh, speaker at all if you know of other ones or you've uh, done ones yourself you've got photos please uh, link it in and discuss it down below so anyway i hope you found that interesting if you did give it a big thumbs up and as always you can comment on the ev blog forum down below and yes i still have some of these um i'm clearing them out ev blogger high voltage probes really schmick high voltage probes over on my store They're currently discounted hurry up quick and yes 121's GWs are back in stock, and yes, I accept crypto as well, all forms of cryptocurrency on my store. Beauty. So if you want to dump some crypto and get some swag, go for it. I've got to shill something to stay in business. Catch you next time. Yeah.